1992, the Sirius road trip became one of the first vehicles to break the Serb siege of Sarajevo. When they arrived, they were horrified. Aid was stockpiling in warehouses. So the trippers stepped in. They approached the Times newspaper in London to sponsor their first truck. They now have a reputation for getting the aid to where it's really needed. They'll go anywhere, anytime, for diesel and a few beers. Where are Good you? Buddy. Where I'm, are you? I'm in New Zealand, Tauranga. And I'm in Cairns, Australia still. <laughs> I, you know, I love New Zealand. I've, been, I've had the pleasure of spending six weeks there. I've had the pleasure of spending six weeks with my brothers and sisters in Australia. And I could talk to you guys for, you know, oh. Graham, I know you're, you're, you're British, right? But... I could talk to you guys about those wonderful countries for hours. Um, it's pretty good. But, but we're not here to talk about that. What are we, no. what are we here to talk about? <laughs> the serious road trip. <laughs> <laughs> that is serious. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let, let, let me just give our friends at home a little bit of background. First, sure. I just want to say, I do a lot of military stuff podcasts and stuff as people know I, I, I'm all for peace I'm not about yeah I, I, right. I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to say anything more about that but what I do want to yeah. say is your story I have so much been looking forward to hearing it it is one of the most mental things I have ever heard in my life yeah. I, I actually feel because yeah. I've watched the videos I've listened to the song um, I feel like I was with you guys, and, and it's the sort of crazy thing I would have ended up doing in my life. You, you would have been, mate, if I'd known you then. You would have yeah. been. And I'm, I'm, I'm reading the, the book. What's Bill's surname, sorry? Carter, Bill Carter. Bill Carter has written a book um, about basically you guys went into war-torn... Oh, there we go. Fools rush in. You went into a war-torn area where everything was going off it was horrible right it was horrible we're talking Mental. we're talking bombs bullets guns mortars <laughs> hey i'm gonna show i'm gonna show my books <laughs> nothing to do with a podcast oh, but if you can we're find them guys <laughs> but you went into this war ravaged area to take food for people who were basically starving and you risked your lives. And you didn't just do that, but you dressed up like bloody jokers and clowns. Yeah. Which... which... <laughs> Random, eh? <laughs> Simone, can, can you, in like a, a, like a soundbite, sum up what, what was that conflict about and where was it? Well, I mean, the conflict, whether you're meaning our organization going into Bosnia or what we actually intended to do, you see. What happened in Bosnia? What was going on? Why was there a war there and who was doing what to whom? Oh, well, I think you better ask Graham all about that. I tried to stay out of that war. The serious road trip was meant to go from London to New Zealand by red double decker bus. And we got so sidetracked by that war, didn't we, Graham? <laughs> well, we did, yes. And it, it lasted longer than we thought, didn't it? Yeah, it did last. I mean, seriously, we were on a red London bus going London to New Zealand, wanting to work with children worldwide and to highlight their situation and do something positive and encourage others to do something positive. And we were on our way over to Bucharest to get going with the street kids when the war had broken out in Bosnia. And uh, Alang Michelle from Aki Libra, one of the groups we would be working alongside, um, begged us to come with them on a peace convoy to Sarajevo. He wanted to stop the war. We all wanted to stop the war. Um, and we were like, what? A war in Bosnia? We didn't even know it existed, you know? And it was, it blew us out of the, out of the ground. We didn't know what we were going to do because 
some of us like myself were terrified. I didn't, I didn't want to go into a war zone. Then most of us were like, we just want to work with the kids. What are you talking about? Going over front lines and snipers and bombs and all this sort of stuff. So actually, um, at that very point, uh, we, there was a bit of a conflict on the bus and we did actually have to decide for ourselves whether we wanted to go into the war zone. The bus did go in with a 30 vehicle strong um, yeah, convoy into besieged Sarajevo. They broke the siege in June 1992. I wasn't on that bus. I can't say that I was brave enough at that point. And I think there was only mad people that went in actually. <laughs> it was bedlam because um, the Serbs had encircled the, the city and the people there were starting to starve. And there had been ethnic cleansing happening. So, so let, let, let's get some sort of clear boundaries here because I'm 50. Yeah. I lived through that conflict through the media, obviously through the, you know, the news. And I still have no idea what, who was doing what to who. I, yeah. I hear like Bosnian Croats and Bosnian Serbs and, and, and all these. Is there any yeah. simple, simple way to explain why did the conflict start and the, what these the, the way i the way i the way i tried to explain it at the time and and really it's one of those things that unless you're there you you don't understand it and the way i tried to explain it is this as if england scotland ireland and wales all decided they wanted to be independent but they all turned on each other and fought for land so so wales were fighting yeah. to gain as much land in england as they possibly can but in Wales, there's Welsh Welsh and there's English Welsh, right? Yeah. So people from England who live in Wales. And so you've got those two different ethnic ethnicities. Um, and sometimes they turn on each other, sometimes they flee, and, and sometimes England goes in and kills all the Welsh Welsh, but lets the English Welsh alive. So now yeah. I've confused you already. Let, let's remember that, that this is the former Yugoslavia, where they had the 1981, or I, I can't remember, don't quote me, Olympics, Winter Olympics. So a really, really amazing country uh, with a beautiful city, Sarajevo, as a capital. And it fragmented. And, and, and for whatever reason, you know, let, we can't really be too sure. And it supposedly became a civil war. Now, mm. Serbia was the bigger of the of the... The, the, the breakdown of that country, the counties or, or the, the smaller countries within. And they took the most of the JNA, the Yugoslav National Army people and equipment. And they, mm. after um, I think Slovakia, Slovenia and a couple of other places got independence from the UN. They, they, were, they were made, declared independent after a very, very yeah. short one or two day war. Um, and, and my memory fades, I do apologize. So they, they were out of it, and there was, so there was three main players. Bosnia, Muslim, Croatia, um, pretty much Catholic, and um, Serbia, which are uh, Orthodox. Is yeah. that right? Some Orthodox. And um, Serbia were, were, were the most powerful, and they wanted to create this yeah, greater, greater Serbia, Serbia, if you like. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, 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 and, and also, but Bosnians are Muslims, um, so but no one really all. wanted. Not yeah. all, no, not all, but mostly, and, and no one in the Western world seemed to really care about the Muslims. Beautiful, beautiful people, and then the Croatians, um, and so this civil yeah. war that was obviously started by someone who knows who broke out in the middle of Europe. Europe turned a blind eye sent a couple of politicians yeah. over, America turned a blind eye, and they just let everyone go at it. But what they did was even worse than that. They decided to put sanctions that affected only the Bosnians, because Bosnia didn't have access to the sea. Croatia and, and Serbia did, and they had uh, access to arms, access to everything, uh, and they made a no-fly zone, and, and they basically, the UN and, and the West, let's just call them the West, just, just made all these sanctions that just made it really hard for the Bosnians to defend themselves. Now, within that, 
you have Serbians who live in Bosnia. So they're Bosnian Serbs. Um, Radovan Karadic was their leader. Or was it Slobodan Milosevic was the leader of the Serbs? Radovan, Radovan Karadic was, was, was the Bosnian Serb. So within Bosnia, you had Serbians. Yeah, you're getting and, really detailed, Graham. <laughs> and Bosnians. But you also had Croatians. So it was so <laughs> frigging confusing. Um, so and, and it was and a land grab. started basically. with a referendum as well. You know that. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah I mean, I'm going to say, I'm going to say here, I think we're just going to lose people. Yeah, yeah. If it was a land grab. Chris, if we try to explain grab. it anymore, we're going to lose yeah. people. So let's just talk about your involvement. Yeah. And the, the adventures that you went on. So one minute you're on a red bus going to New Zealand. That's right. Now it's diverted into a war zone. At what point yeah. did you decide, yeah, I'm in? Well, I must say at that point, no, I was on a train to Bucharest and we painted don't shoot on the side of the bus to protect our friends that were going with this convoy. And, um, but the and where, thing is... Where is, yeah. where is Bucharest, Simone? Bucharest is Romania. And it's, it's actually what we had initially intended to do was to work with street kids and orphans in Romania, which had been where one of the, the guys, Nev, who'd started the serious road trip, he had already experienced the orphanages and was deep, deeply shocked and wanted to return and do something, but something for all the children of the world. So starting off, it was going to be Bucharest and then further up to Yonashen in the north of Romania. But um, he was so inspired by this idea of stopping a war and the peace convoy to Sarajevo that that he and Christoph and, and various other people, they, they and Damon all decided, that's it, we're going into Sarajevo. We were absolutely terrified for them. In those days, there were no mobile phones. We, we didn't know what was going to happen to them. And so we waited for news in Bucharest. But, but what were they going into Sarajevo in, Simon? In the red bus, yeah. <laughs> in the red bus. It, it got even blessed by some priests that were accompanying this peace convoy. Yeah, it was a blessed bus. And... Um, and definitely they carried vital supplies. And in fact, while they were there, there were people begging them um, to take 50 orphans out of the city. And they tried to hang on in the city for as long as they could to get the paperwork through to carry the orphans out. But unfortunately, uh, it wasn't possible. And then there were lots of, you know, there, this, all the time there was a lot of gunfire, shelling, their lives were at risk and they had to get out. Yeah. Um, did, did you guys go on that bus? At what point did you get involved? No, I was, I was waiting for them. It was so mum was sensible enough not to go on it. Yeah, this is the thing. It's not everyone's cup of tea. You guys, you guys are perhaps used to it a bit more than me. But um, uh, I certainly had a lot of um, fear for that situation. I did build up to going into a war zone, but not at that point. And so, actually, it was when they came out of Bosnia that they were convinced, actually, what on earth are we doing working with orphans in, in Romania? We need to be doing convoys into Bosnia. These people are starving, and we've also got to try and stop that war if we can. You know, So uh, this is when Graham got involved, in fact, because Serious Road Trip um, head office in London was looking to do more convoys, and they put out a plea for, over the radio and on TV for people to help. And so, you got involved then, didn't you, Graham? Yeah, well, they, they, this country needed an IV drip very quickly, mm. very quickly. Just, um, just, and just a quick question, guys. Sorry to go on an aside, but I think people will, will, will be asking, why is, is the orphan problem in Romania the way, you know, we, yeah. we've heard a lot of this over the last sort of 10, 15 years. What, why is it a problem there? Is it something to do with, you know... If you grow up were, and you have a kid, you can't look after it or it's financial. Yeah. I mean, Ceausescu, their dictator, was um, making sure that every woman in the country had as many children as she could. Yeah, he wanted a huge population. He almost had these grandiose visions, a bit like Hitler. And um, he wanted as many Romanians as possible. And anyone that had a slightly deformed child, 
that went straight into an orphanage or if people hadn't wanted children and had tried to have a failed abortion because there were no abortions it might have been a knitting needle or something some of these children were coming out deformed so they would end up in the orphanage and then people were living in very bleak conditions um, sometimes with only two hours electricity a day very impoverished uh, huge queues to get just bread in one shop and then huge queues to get a bit of cheese somewhere else you know so they couldn't actually deal with all the children so those children would, would also be abandoned in orphanages it was it was hopeless mm. yeah wow and i'm right think didn't child chesco shoot himself in the end or they, no, no, they, they were executed. executed on christmas day yeah they were executed, him and his wife, was it not? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay. And then they uncovered these orphanages. I think people were over there covering the revolution, um, journalists, and they stumbled across these orphanages. And, and one of the journalists, um, he, he brought lots of volunteers from Scotland and England and all sorts of places. And, and that's one of the orphanages where we actually were going to, because that's where the, you know, Nev and Damon had been the year prior or 18 months prior and um yeah that's that's the, that's the bit that actually got me very motivated um to do something is actually meeting those children and it was only later that i i actually got tempted to go into bosnia and other places so let's talk about how how did you guys meet where was your when did you meet graham i i met graham back in london prior to the convo convoy that he was um part of the thing is, we started off with very fragmented convoys, didn't we, Graham? Where you yeah. just have any old person volunteering yeah. off the radio or from the radio adverts. Yeah. So I met these guys and I met Simon in, in London and I thought, yeah, th th this is a suitable bunch of nutters to get involved with who, who, who <laughs> want to do, do some incredible good. And obviously, that, I mean, I came from a military unit full of nutters and, and, and these guys really appealed to me. And, um, and I thought I could add something. I had my heavy goods vehicle driver's license. Um, they're driving aid to Bosnia. And I thought, okay, let's go. Let me do this one great thing that we've all got to do in life and deliver some food to, to, to a war zone, see what that's like, come home and carry on with life. And, and back then we, we didn't really have a good operation going and we were using what, what we call owner drivers. So, so mm. a, a, a driver would, take, would volunteer his two weeks, bring his truck, we'd load our aid on it that we've collected in London or Simon and the others have collected in London, stored in pubs and various places. And we'd all drive off in a massive convoy, you know, 10, 10 trucks, Arctic trucks with all this aid, off to go to Sarajevo. Um, but usually as when we got to Split, which is in Croatia, where a lot of the UN and the press are involved, um, we had to stop to get paperwork. And, and generally these, you know, these civilian, that's a really wrong term to use, truck drivers, listened to the stories from the journalists, got a bit spooked, dropped yeah. our aid off at the UN, hightailed it and went home. Yeah, way uh, too dangerous for them. Yeah. yeah, and they didn't want to take their trucks into Sarajevo where there's no insurance and the AA won't come and, come and pick them <laughs> up. And... Um, and of course, it's a hell of a long, long way to drive, you know, London, London to Sarajevo. You know, it's a good, good week and a half hard driving. Um, so that wasn't really efficacious and, and, and it wasn't, um, you know, financially viable. So no. we had to come up with another paradigm, um, which, which, which we did in the end. And, and, and hopefully I was a part of that. Um, but, I, but I will say, I think during one of those, and, and I'll have to ask you about this, Simon. Yeah. We, we, we had a man, I, I'll call him an angel, but we, we had an overseer of the road trip, a guardian of the road trip. His, his name was Charlie Robson, MBE. And funnily enough, Chris, a beautiful connection, mate. He, he, was, a, he was a bootneck. And um, not only was he a bootneck, he, he went on to be SBS um, in the old days when they gave you a Lee Enfield and a wooden canoe. <laughs> so he was old school. And, and he, he, was, um, he was very, very big part of the, the serious road trip and what a mentor to yeah. have what a, and, and, and he ran a transport business didn't he with trucks yeah, yeah. Rotten Hall is transport transport in Bermondsey so he had this massive transport he knew about trucking he knew about military but what I was going to ask you Simon is I, I believe he went on one of the very early 
convoys after the bus and they had I think yeah. they hired a Scania truck and they had a Land Rover and and he was on the one where they got hijacks I believe and and, yeah. and the truck and the Land Rover were stolen off them at gunpoint by the Serbs. Is that yeah. right? Have I got that right? And, so and just just the leader of that convoy got taken down the, to the river and there were gunshots. It wasn't a, one of our group, it was a local person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 you know, Charlie Robson, ex-SBS, helping out a bunch of nutters, off we go into this war zone. Um, yeah. But Graham, and, you have to and, e explain what's, what's, what's a bootneck and what's SBS. Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. So, so bootneck is a, is a Royal Marine, a Royal Marine commando. <laughs> And I think that yeah, I think that's what you were, isn't it, Chris? Mate, they're all a bunch of bastards, as as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> they love, apparently, they wear they love wearing women's clothes. I I I don't know. It's just a rumor. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And of course, SBS is is. Um, <laughs> don't stand up, Chris. Um, SBS is Special Boat Service, so it, it's it's equivalent right. to the SAS, but but it's the it, it, the nautical side. I I, I would. Yeah, explain it like yeah. that, and it's 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 usually Royal Marines that go into it. I think. Um, let's and they let, do all, all the. Let's on. move forward into you guys going into yeah. action because we got a long story to tell here. Yeah, and, it's a um, long story. I mean, basically, because it seemed to be such a, a an a range of a range of different drivers and trucks who weren't necessarily uh, cut out to go the full distance. We had to take things into our own hands and start looking around for true hardcore road trippers that wanted to go all the way people like graham roger manny that ended up coming on board these people were ready to go all the way to sarajevo and we needed a fleet of trucks and that's yep. where charlie stepped in to help us get that fleet yep. of trucks didn't he yeah yeah so charlie took me to germany uh, i came back off these two convoys and, and and our aid had been given to the un it sat there in split croatia it's not getting to the people this wasn't working and what we noticed was all this UN aid was coming to Croatia and just piling up and being misappropriated. And we didn't like this. It needed to get up country into Bosnia. And there wasn't much UN presence, military presence in Bosnia at the time. So Charlie Robson took me to um, a, a, a military base in Germany and we bought a whole yeah. host of old MK Bedfords, right? And we shipped them on, in an auction and we shipped them back to his yard. Bless him. Um, and we spent so, a load of time in his yard. Are they we trucks? Started... Are they, what, what kind of trucks are they then? The, the four ton, the old four ton military Bedfords, MKs. Okay. Yeah, they are really good, really good hardcore trucks, workhorses. Um, sorry, that's what we used in the military in my day. Mm. And, um, and, and they're just brilliant workhorses, but they've only got a four, four ton capacity. So we've got this fleet of eight, eight to 10 trucks now in, in his yard. And, and we're painting them, we're, we're, we're servicing them, and we're getting ready. There they are, they're the old MK. There's one there. There's yeah. One. And, and, and we decide to paint them yellow, and I'll come back to why we did that later and, and put cartoons on. And then we advertise for, for, for you know, a bunch of nutters wanted to go in to take some army trucks into yeah. Sarajevo. Two nutters here wow. <laughs> on, on my podcast. I love yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so, hey, except for they wouldn't let women go on the convoys, Chris. <laughs> no, we wouldn't. No. <laughs> we wouldn't. Rule number one. <laughs> Was that... I, I, I'm, guessing, but I'm guessing that's because if you got captured and... and Kidnapped, yeah. it, it would be fucking horrendous. It would be yeah. fucking horrendous, and, mate. You, and, and also because we're men and ego, and we've been wanting to protect these girls from getting raped by Serbs or Croats or Czechniks or mercenaries, we would then try and defend them. They'd slit our throats, kill us, and uh, it would just yeah. be carnage. You, you just can't put women into that environment. I mean, it's bad enough that you know that that, that they'd often threaten to rape us or, or kill us or, or slit our throats, but what they would do to women, uh, or, they, or they would just make the woman stay and make you go. Um, it just couldn't happen. So it was nothing sexist or anything like that. It was no, just a very common it's, sense. Yeah. It's quite a, a, a pertinent point at the minute though, because obviously they're talking about now, now the Royal Marines is open to women, Yeah. which any Royal Marine will tell you, if you pass those tests, 
you're one of us. It's that simple. It's yeah. That, yeah. No, there's no, but, but you've got to ask a question. Like, do you, do you want to do that job? Like if you're a mum and you got yeah, with kids. one, with one kids child or two or three, yeah. do you fucking really want to go off and kill other yeah. people? Yeah, it, it, or, or, uh, and or, or risk, get captured and be interrogated, and yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, not uh, no judge, ju no judgment here, guys. I'm just saying, no. like, fuck no. yeah. now, it's it's all you people know, don't it. think about those those connotations, right? And, and and we had to think about those connotations because let let me explain, Chris. Th th this was a brutally evil frigging war. This this was this was World War Two happening in 1992. Chetniks yeah. and Ustasha. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'm talking putting babies in ovens and raping babies and chopping their heads off and, and in front of their mothers. This was the nastiest, horriblest shit that, 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 that we could, we, we seen since Genghis Khan, World War One, World War Two, Japan, China, that sort hey, of nastiness. Hey, can you believe that a lot of people go there on holiday and it's, it's a lovely place to go? I mean, I don't know it if is. you see the map, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean just a beautiful, beautiful country. Can I can I just Sorry. say I, I've been to Split. I landed in yeah. Split on the on the I think it was EasyJet or something, and and I spent time in Croatia with one of my my oldest friends there. And you know, this is the crazy thing about conflict when you move on 20, 30 years, whatever it is, you arrive yeah. in this bloody beautiful place. For the beautiful people, yeah. uh, you know, obviously there's fucking bullet holes everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And people love people. It's just that simple. You know, people love people. The world over, it doesn't matter. But we, 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 we chuck in this... Yeah. I, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but what I'm trying to say is we chuck in this like political elite that that they rock the apple cart and they get people and they got the media and on they, their side and suddenly yeah. his, history repeats propaganda. itself. Propaganda. Yeah. Propaganda. Propaganda. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like the um where was it in Africa where where they the you know the Hootsies and the Tootsies. Sorry if I've said that wrong, Rwanda. but you know, Rwanda, where, where people that lived alongside each other as friends, as Turn brothers, as, as communities, suddenly went out yeah. just, just initially because what they heard on the radio, they went, ah, oh, actually, this guy living next door is a complete you-know-what. I'm going to go and mm -hmm. hack him to death with my machete. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and it was I very think... similar. Similar, and people were actually having to set up a, a front line in the middle of their city or town, and they were like, "But we don't understand why we're doing it because those are our brothers, and you know, they're the people we, we grew up with on the other side of the road." Yes. Um, and they didn't understand, but they were listening to stuff from above. Yeah. So let, let's talk about let you know what was it like getting in these trucks and and you know. Yeah. Uh, there's a million. I mean, I drove, as people will know, I drove from Norway to to Delhi in India. Oh, then wow. I drove, yeah, I drove a a twelve ton British Leyland bus. Wicked. Uh, we we had we started off with sixteen volunteers on board. Our mission was to raise awareness of other cultures that live in poverty, right? Beautiful. Oh, wow. By the you time were a road we drove, <laughs> he is. Oh, it, <laughs> Forgive me, T-shirt. I, I, I'm. I, to anybody listening, I am just so thankful to my mother nature that she gave me that chance to be on that bus. You know, mm. we we drove through the desert in Baluchistan, which is part of Pakistan. We have yeah. bandits. Like literally, they could be waiting around the next corner with their AK 47s ready right. to stop our Similar. bus, fucking kill us all, rape our women, yeah. steal. We, we didn't have money, we were all volunteers. We literally, we beg isn't the right word, but we, we had to ask people to support us, right? So, like, I've been on one of these, um, these kind of trips. Ah, yeah, you so know I, it. Yeah, well, yeah. I can I can relate to what you guys are 
a saying. Yeah. But anyway, sorry. Enough about me. Back, 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 back to you. What was it like setting off? Well, from I, mean, I, yeah, I go on. when those guys set off in the the whole convoy of yellow trucks, that was quite something to see, actually. I mean, they yeah. all had different personalities on the trucks as well. We had a, an artist that had painted um, a wolf, a wolfy character that was like the mascot of the Sarajevo Olympics, I think. And yes, right. And what was your truck, Graham? Oh God, as I can't remember. So, but we we, no. we basically <laughs> had we we managed. Thanks for to Charlie Robson and his wife Linda who came on convoys with us. We yeah. set up all these trucks. We got this bunch of we we got twelve. Uh, which were, I call the Dirty Dozen, and I've had to rack my brain to remember them. And it was Doug, English Rog, Aussie Rog, uh, New Zealand Co Colin, many who I think is Israeli English, uh, Aussie Allen, Pete, Gavin, myself, Josh, French Christophe, and Paul Maxey, Kiwi. And that was the Dirty Dozen. And we, we got in these trucks and drove them basically in this great convoy across Europe. And, and these guys, you know, I, I love these guys like brothers. They're, they're, they're just, you know, the, the military brothers in arms thing, Chris. Yeah, okay, that's okay. These guys, I, you know, I, I would trust my life with these guys. They're, 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 we just, it was, they're amazing people. So, you know, it, it's, it's not you just know. military people who can do great things. It, it, it's, you know, th this crew of people were incredible. And, and they had more balls than most. And that was the juggling ball company who sponsored yeah. us. And um, so we drove, we drove these trucks across, we got to split. Um, then Tony, the Irish Tony, Schlauncher Tony, who I love like a brother as well, mad Irish man with some serious balls. Um, he came across to be our convoy leader after we'd been there for a little while. And we'd done a few convoys. And, and what we did, was we, we, we set up this, this whole network of you guys, the UN and anyone in a white truck, you don't have the balls on the capacity to drive up country over the mountains and the snow and the ice from Croatia into Sarajevo through the fighting fractions to deliver the food that, that's needed to go there. And there's no aeroplanes, no aircraft, no C-130s flying in. We'll do it. You pay for our diesel. We'll put your aid in the back of our truck. We'll take it there. And, yeah. and that's what we did. And, 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 and as a bunch of mavericks, we, we just took it in. We just... Uh, convoy after convoy, these bunch of nutters, these these brothers of mine, um, and and Simons, we just t we just drove and drove and drove and drove and broke trucks and mended trucks and broke and went over mountains and we just kept taking tons and tons and tons of food into Sarajevo. We, we were getting hijacked, we were getting held hostage, uh, we were getting shot at, we were getting shelled, we were getting bombed, we were, we were getting bribed. And we just took, we would not take no for an answer. <laughs> we just didn't care. You will let us in. Mm. And, and basically, yeah. Chris, what we, what, what we were doing is, is, is we were trying to shame the UN in, in, into um, doing more than they were doing for the people of Sarajevo. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. And, and, and basically we were and embarrassed. With spirit and them. heart. Yeah. 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 With, with, with just with good vibe. Um, and a bunch yeah. of old battered up old army trucks painted yellow. Yeah. And, and we embarrassed them and, and the press, we, we just got all over the British press. They, they just couldn't believe the story of the London double decker bus, yellow trucks, bunch of Kiwis, English guys, yeah. just driving through war Loads zones. Loads of nationalities. Yeah, yeah. And, and, the, and we refuse what's called UN accreditation, which is a blue card, which means that they will protect you and help you if you work under their umbrella. And, yeah. and do what is do that what the, they uh, tell you to do. And is their rules. The one yeah, world, yeah, yeah. The, one, yeah. the one world umbrella. Yeah. And we said, we don't need your, we don't need your accreditation or your blue cards. So there's many times when the UN would try and, you know, stop, it, stop us at the road. So you can't go up there. It's dangerous. Mm. Uh, get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. See ya. I got, we go um, I got this theory, guys, you know, it, it, uh, it I, th I like to think, you know, I think everybody should think instead of just following what they see in the news. I think people should think. Yeah. When, when you see these things like live aid and stuff. Hang on. Shouldn't we all be kind and bloody giving? Yeah. Should, shouldn't that be like taught to us in schools? Shouldn't we be the, the money thing and the power be. Fuck that lower down bullshit, yeah. you know? 
and when you see the live aid hang on and, and and it's the same for children in need these to me in my old age and i'm just going to say what what i feel now right because i'm not a liar yeah. and, and i'm not a cheat and i don't yeah. want i don't mm. ever want to be right they just yeah. seem to me like sticking plasters that get the public like hey we're all doing good you know we're all doing good with i gave five pounds to children in need or to africa it, it it's yeah it, hang on hang it's on. called noble it's called yeah in in psychology chris it's called noble cause corruption yes right oh, that wow. is uh, we, we, go yeah. graham <laughs> <laughs> i've studied this shit since i've been in australia <laughs> this is this is why graham's been on my podcast three times now <laughs> yeah, thanks. i love this man he he just speaks the truth oh. and he cares, he well it's cares noble about. cause corruption which, which in in today's terminology sort of is, has been sort of turned into virtue signaling so so we give oh, to charities yeah. and makes us feel good because altruism isn't a, isn't a word mm. it makes us feel good and we can talk about it but we turn a blind eye to what really happens so yeah. we send it to save the children we send it to oxfam we send it to unhcr but it just goes into a warehouse in split uh, the locals <coughs> who they employ yeah. take it and give it to their serbian friends they sell it on the black market and it goes into the war effort so it's worse yeah. than what you say, Chris. It oh, actually oh, starts to fuel the frigging war. Oh, overall, just to summarise, right? These these public displays of affection and donation and charity mm. are a smokescreen to divert people from actually fucking dealing with the real yeah. issues in life. To make yeah, with the cognitive go, dissonance of yeah. I gave fifty quid to children in need. That's I, I'm good. No, no, no. You're not good. You're only good if you actually look at what is the root cause of these problems, who is controlling uh, this shit show? Yeah. Who is, yeah. you know, who, who, Imagine, who, imagine if we'd stopped that war in Bosnia, you know? Yeah. Now, now you'll understand this, Simon, because our principal, Chris, w is basically, and after the military, when I got out of the military, and, and I, you know, I was in, the, in a crazy parachute unit, very small, bunch of nutters, love them. Um, mm. and, and when I got out, uh, because I thought that the, the world of war was going corrupt. Um, w when I met the serious road trip, our philosophy was that we had to be mor morally correct in every decision we make. And after I left the military, I went and traveled India, Chris, as, as I think you know, and I did the whole, you know, spiritual awareness thing, but, um, whatever that's a euphemism for. And, um, and, and when I met the road trip, they were all very, very similar guys, you know, they, they, they were bunch of kiwis barefoot buddhas around their neck and and we had this philosophy that we would never ever ever do something wrong and 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 that would put a bubble a spiritual bubble over us and we would be protected now that sounds like utter bullshit all right and, and purple hippie shit but at one stage when we where we lived in in split um in croatia in our pension uh, 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 where we live we actually gave refuge to some british mercenaries who had had enough and wanted to get out and um they actually we smuggled them out basically illegally and and they basically said to us we can tell you that when the croatian and serbian army see your trucks and and the yellow trucks with the cartoons they don't shoot at you because they know you're there for the children and they all yeah. have children it's all about the children, okay. you know. And it was all about the children. And I mean, and on that note, actually, once I heard about all the children gathering in these refugee centres in the hotels or barracks or tents all along the coast of Croatia in fairly safer areas, um, we were enticed down to do uh, clowning tours around all these centres. And um, in fact, when we heard that we were going to split, we thought, wow, banana split. So we actually named ourselves the bananas for split and um, jumped in a combi camper van, painted up all brightly colors. Johnny the clown from Ireland, Caroline the mouse from uh, Cork. And um, we had a, a driver as well from Ireland. And um, off we set to go tour all these um, refugee centers with Christoph at, at our helm as well. and. Um, 
it was just incredible for me to actually see these children had come from Sarajevo. They'd been evacuated or they'd escaped from a village that had been razed to the ground and they'd ended up in some place, maybe even only 10 kilometers down the road. But they, they were living in a very much a, a sort of a bubble of, we don't know what the future holds for us. And we all we know is that we're safe here for this very moment, but it could be that the things change and we have to move further along or whatever. And we came along with a clowning show just to bring that little bit of sunshine and fun for them and, and had juggling balls, face paints. We started- Let them be children. Up. Yeah, I mean, it was so grim in the camps. There wasn't really much to look forward to, but at least with a few um, things like the juggling balls, all the face paints, or even just happy memories, um, what, the what children were... had something positive to think about yeah. rather than what they and, were and, and to show that someone, somebody out there in that world that has forgotten yeah. about them is coming yeah. there to give them love. I, I, and to and to let them be children and say you, you it's okay kids you can be children you can see yeah. some clowns as well you can come to the circus and and, and that infected Simon's paradigm it affected us as as, as convoy yeah. drivers going into the water and we, <laughs> we all started to do it and dye our hair and wear and, earrings and, and learn to love, juggle. That, you know <laughs> that love that you showed these children they will hold that in their hearts for the rest of their lives. You know, oh, Chris, that was our so. philosophy. Our, our philosophy was that we, we, we could, we can go and help some starving people. That's not our friggin' job. That's the UN's job. That's, that's the West's job. That's NATO's job. You know, we, we can take a hundred tons or 50 tons of food and, and, and help yeah. these starving people and give them an IV or, or we can make a fire break and reach the next generation. Yeah. And hopefully, give them hope so this legacy of hatred will not continue yeah and, and, and the balkans ever since has been very volatile but another war hasn't broken up and now i'm not saying that's because of us but but we addressed the children we made a generational yeah i think i mean break certainly um actually are we going to talk about our trip to mostar though i mean i was freaked out about going into the war zone area but actually once we um, plucked up a bit more courage, or I did, <laughs> I was persuaded by everyone we needed to go to Mostar because there was actually a ceasefire there. And we actually packed ourselves into a, in a red double-decker bus again because we managed to get a second one down there. And, um, and we drove into Mostar to do this clowning tour, Bananas Part 2 again. And do you know what? I couldn't believe it was reduced to rubble it's like the second world war like dresden yeah. after all the bombing yeah. you know it was yeah. just like what an earth where are these children living they were climbing out of the rubble to come and see us and um christoph had his little unicycle he was like the pied piper with kids chasing after him and we were Blue, juggling away and, and i mean we just couldn't believe that the children um had been, I think they must have been living underground somehow in, in you know, in like cellars, yeah? Because that might have yeah. been safer than up above. Yeah. Every yeah. single building, almost no building had a roof on it, no windows, even, I mean, all the walls had gone, maybe one facade was still standing. <clears throat> and um, we just said, hey, we'd love to do a, a clowning show for you. What do you think? And they were just, the, the one the children that were there were so excited and we just said we're going to come back in an hour and do that show for you and we literally when we did that first clowning show in Mostar East Mostar which was the Muslim side of the city yeah Bosnian side the west yeah. side wasn't actually as as um, drastic but we we weren't there on that side um when we were doing this clowning show we we were in front of the theater and we were literally looking over into the um what do you call it? The park where they had buried the dead children. Yeah. So we're we're performing for the live children, but the dead children are in the grass just behind them. Yeah. Um, it was actually really heart wrenching. You know, we had a child coming up to juggle with the clowns, and he had only one arm, so that had been blown off in the war. I mean, seriously. But they did they enjoy that show? Yes, and they begged us. They said. You won't believe it. Because of the ceasefire, school has just started this week. So half the children are actually 
in school right now and they would love to come to the show too. Can you please come back this afternoon when they're free? Which of course we, we obliged to. And do you know what? We came back into town expecting a, a similar sized crowd. There were thousands in the street. We didn't know what to do. It was gonna be a crowd control problem. I mean, seriously, when you've got a, an excited child trying to get forward towards the clowns, you can have kids being crushed, you know, like in a football match, I guess. But um, so I was on the back of the bus with my hands up in the air going, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? This is really dangerous if we try and do a show and there's thousands coming towards us crushing everyone. And I just, I, I had to almost say, we're not going to be able to do a show. Uh, but the, there was a police car that was just sort of, cruising around trying to suss out what was going on as well and they were saying where is the show and I said there is no show it's too dangerous you know or it's through Snezhana our translator and um and then <laughs> can you believe it this this um policeman said but the show must go on <laughs> 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 sort of like they're not going to take no for an answer you know no, they'd be right <laughs> And um, he and I was like, well, well, where are we going to be? You know, like, um, and he found, he, he actually knew of a place that we could get to. We couldn't get the bus there, but we could get the crowd there. And it was like a handball stadium where you had all that tiered seating. And man, it was packed with all these people come to see the show. And, and some of them dressed in their Sunday best. We couldn't believe it. Mm. Um, These people were desperate for yeah, therapy. Yeah, they were. I mean, the children afterwards right. we were signing autographs and also, and they saying, "Can you come and do another show?" And it was like, "Well, this is the only show we have." Yeah, well, we haven't seen anything for two years. We've been locked up, cooped up, no running water, no food. You know, anyone that went out to try and get food got shot at, or and and yeah. the bridge had been blown up. The beautiful Mostar Bridge had been blown to smithereens. So yeah. you know, and well, that's why we took this generational divide. You know, we we just said. Fire break. We, we've got to affect the young children. We, we've yeah, got to show them. We've got to show them that this is not the future. This is not the way. People yeah. will come from another world and love you, and they will dedicate yeah. their lives and risk their lives to help you and and to give you juggling balls and food and fun and talk about your favourite pop song and just let you be. Ask and you what's fun. bumming you out. Or kick a football. Kick you know? a football, have a game of football, have That's a game of football. That's what you guys team. used to do a lot of yeah. kicking footballs yeah. with the kids. Yeah. Because, okay, so this, is, this was our paradigm, Chris. We, we refused to be like the UN. So there was a lot of money to be made in Bosnia if you, if you wanted to be an aid worker convoy driver. You get given a helmet and a, and a flak jacket, you drive a big UN truck, and you make about um, £2,000 a week, right? Yeah. We were right? I could have come out of there. <laughs> I, I, I could have retired if I wanted to on that. And also, if you wanted to go into the black market smuggling, you only had to do two runs, and I'd now be living in, in a mansion, right? So, what they did is all macho drive with their, and they're all ex military, they're driving their flak jackets and their big trucks and their radios and the, and the warrior tanks supporting them. And they'd get somewhere, they'd just drop off all the food and fuck off very impersonal and, and and our philosophy was we'll drop off the food in small packages in certain areas and we'll sit for the rest of the day and play football with you and talk to you have a drink and a tea yeah. and, and maybe a beer if there's a beer with you and the maybe we'll leave tomorrow and we're you that it. we're going to come back with a little bit more food because what happened to that un food with the big tough guys in the flat jackets who were ex whatever um that food just, just got put into a big warehouse and sold on the black market and became part of the war effort. Because these people don't know whether they're going to live or die. They don't know whether they're going to be alive next week. So they don't need three weeks worth of food. So they'll sell two weeks worth. Or it go on the yeah. black market and, and the Serbians will, will, will sell it on the black market and, and it will go to buying more arms and, 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 and keep the war going. And as you say, Chris, you know, that's all part of part of the you know the trick um and our yeah. philosophy is, and simon's uh, side of that helped us do this was no nah, we're going to stay with these kids we're going to love them we're going to give them love yeah. we're going to show that someone from the outside world 
where yeah. Bill Clinton's not helping you. Us from New Zealand, Australia, England, we're going to come France. here and we're going to play football with you. France, we're going to come. And here's a funny thing. My brother Christoph, who, who, who was on the first convoy with me, one of the, the original uh, Dirty Dozen, young, young French guy, and he's staying in Sarajevo with me at, at, at the very first time we set up a distribution centre in Sarajevo. Here's the ironic thing. This is why I love him to death. He oh, ran away to the serious road trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to escape conscription to the French army. <laughs> and they oh, were trying right. to get him back, weren't they? I so. know, I know. <laughs> we, he couldn't leave Bosnia because he'd have to join the French army and go and fight in a war somewhere. And he came to, and he came to the worst war in Europe. Yeah. Bless him. Yeah. And, and this is why I love these people, you know, and, and they're just incredible people. And as you know, how we met uh, Chris was, was through this whole thing that if you're in the military, it doesn't make you better than anybody else. That there's good and bad people. It doesn't matter what you do. Yeah. And, 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 and these dirty dozen, you know, people I mentioned earlier, they are some of the best people I've ever worked with in my life. And I would, I would trust them with my life. Um, there's a story about English Roger and, and, and we had to split ways in a convoy and, and he had to sit in, in a car park and split waiting for us, not knowing whether we were going to get back for, for two, two and a half weeks. Eating, eating chocolate baby food, <laughs> just waiting I, for her, and, and we didn't even know. He didn't know he if didn't we were going to make it. Enough money to give him food. <laughs> nothing, nothing. They, these guys, I'm serious. Yeah. They, they had the biggest balls of, of any. <laughs> either that, or they were just mad. I, I, I've never worked it out, really. But as you know, you know, most of your booty mates are, were, were a little bit mad. <laughs> Same as my paramates, you know. They were just mad as fuck, mate, really. They, these guys were the same, it. Chris. They just, they didn't choose to go down the military route, but they ended yeah. up in the war zone. And, they, and what we didn't have in that war zone, we couldn't call in airstrike and we didn't have guns. And, 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 and we just had nothing. We had soft skin vehicles. And we decided to go through checkpoints and down Mount Igman and, and, and down these places where you can get shot at and shelled. Anyway, let's just do it. Mm. These guys had serious balls. And, 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 you know, I was the only one who was ex-military. So, so when, you know, 105 millimeter shells landed next to us, I was the one that went, hmm, don't like the sound of that too much. Mm. Whereas they're, you know, they're sort of going, ignorance is bliss in a way. But we all talked about what we were doing. We all talked about it. And, and, and these guys were just brilliant. I'm speechless listening to you guys and anything you say is just, it, 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 it I'm, I'm speechless. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm other, glad. Other than, other than thank you on behalf of humanity for crying out loud, God. So thank you, Chris. Thank you, brother. Well, yeah, you know, let's, let, we, we need to start talking our truths in life and not buying yeah. into these multimedia yeah. narratives because we know the people that control the media just want us to be unhappy and we they want us to keep killing and and yeah it, it can divided be way it can and make be. enemies yeah so and yet people that. want love that's what they want and in fact on our last on my one of my last trips through bosnia we named it we named it each tour differently and so this one was going into the heart of bosnia this was after the dayton peace agreement came in so there's quite a bit of stuff that happened before that which we'll go back to but i just thought while we're on this clowning thing um we ended up going on a dobra kadabra tour which was like good magic like abracadabra but dobra meaning good. good so the good magic tour of um bosnia in a, a yellow truck um and we were going into places like Garage Day where they'd been cut off for two years or more as well. And oh, this, this the places that we went and the people, they made us feel so welcome. And we were like the international guests. They'd been almost on the verge of dying for a couple of years. And then these clowns turned up and we, they, some, some places they even built us a little stage for us to perform on. I mean, it was just amazing. And another place, we, we were having to actually give the clowning show to all three sides so that, you know, everyone got a, 
a share of the, the magic, where, whether it was the Serb-held territory of Bosnia or the Croatian-held uh, or the Bosniaks. And um, I remember doing a show in a place, um, a, a Serb-held area, and it was... We, we arrived there. In fact, we almost didn't get there because our, our convoy, we were, be, we were meant to be getting an I-4 convoy leader, you know, someone that was going to protect us in our clowning vehicle on the way there. We were in the pink car, Land Rover, actually. And um, we turned up and it was chaos on the, on the Danish battalion that day because they'd lost two guys to a mining accident, yeah? And the guy was a little bit professionally um, keeping it together, but you could see that he was actually uh, upset that two of his men had been lost and he was going to have to notify their families and everything. Um, but he was committed to leading us over into the front, over the front line through a minefield to get to the show at the other end where the kids were waiting. And it was desperate. I mean, he said, normally we'd have a, a lead vehicle, but we don't have that vehicle anymore. It's been blown up. But I have the mining map or the mine map. Uh, I'm I'm happy to lead you through. So there he was sitting in, a, in our pink Land Rover with his flat jacket on and the helmet and the mine map. <laughs> and there we are, dressed up in our clowning outfits or, you know, magic suits, um, zigzagging through the road just to get to these children on the other side. And the, the hysteria in the air at, when we arrived, the excitement, you know, there were like, I think there were about a thousand children in that in that sort of like a community hall, and we did a show in the morning and a show in the afternoon, and they even had the television there from, oh, what's the main Banyaluka television? Yeah, it was a Serb held territory, so it was Serb television, and they were filming it. And do you know what? At the end of the show, and we had a real love scene between two giant puppets, and there was a lot of juggling balls and that and making a kiss you know so a lot of blowing kisses and messages of love and humanity to these children and at the end they threw red roses at us I don't know where they got these red roses and how they hid them but it was a magic sort of being showered with red roses at the end and that, and 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 then when I asked this young teenager boy at the end what did he like most about our show? And I was I was wondering whether he was going to say it was Johnny's unicycle trick or the bucket trick or the fire juggling or whatever. And he just said, no, you know what I loved most about your show? Your show was a show about peace. And you know what? You've performed that show on the same stage as the Serb military would be holding their sort of meetings or rallies but your show was about love and peace. That's what I like most about it. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, that's the message we're going to take from this podcast, isn't it? You know, yeah. love and peace. And so can well, you just... they made the documentary about the serious, well, a, a couple of documentaries were made. I'm sure you'll link, yeah. link it. And I, you know, I hope people watch it. This is a very well made documentary. And, and that's, you know, I, I think she was from um, UNICEF. A Bosnian work in UNICEF and, and and you can yeah. see her in there and she says that what these people bring is is they they actually bring love for these children and I think this is a good thing and, yeah. and, and she hit the nail on the head you know we, we want the biggest trucks we want the biggest agency but we we bought something special we bought a message yeah. and they did love it and they needed it they were desperate for it they were and, and, desperate for it and we were happy to risk our lives to do that, you know, and that's not being wanky and bigging ourselves up. We, we did. Um, oh. And it, it, you, you can see it in the documentary, you can read it in the books, you know, I'm not making this up, as someone yeah. knows, you know. We, I've it, tried it, to document as much as I can in my book, The Serious Road Trip. I mean, this obviously takes you on quite a few other journeys, not just the Bosnian journey, but there's a lot on Bosnia in there as well. But we did, we did cover a, a lot of territory, not yeah, just... Yeah, we, yeah, massive, massive. Let's talk about uh, f f physics now, as in the, the physicality of the areas you were entering. Was w I'm guessing they were bombed and bullet ridden and and. Oh yeah, I mean certainly, 
I mean, Graham, what, what was it like with you in Sarajevo? I, I mean, it, when I went to Sarajevo, it was during the Dayton Peace Agreement, and it does it did feel a, a bit different to the <coughs> Sarajevo that had been described by when they were there. Absolutely. Under siege. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so to put it in context, while Simon was doing that, we had these 10 yellow cartoon endorned Bedford trucks and a Land Rover that we based in split in Croatia. And any time that we could get the permission, we would fill with food, medical supplies and clothing and drive from split, which could take anything from two to three days to get to Sarajevo to two to three weeks, depending yeah. on how difficult the Serbs wanted to make it for us. Um, and, and we, I mean, we were resilient. We just, if they said we couldn't go at the checkpoint, we would just wait, th wait there, play our music really loud, juggle, drink whatever juggle. alcohol we get until they get <laughs> bored of us and wave us on. <laughs> yeah. I'll get out of there. And, um, and, 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 and that was a, yeah, so anything from a two to three day to, to two week journey to get from split into Sarajevo. Now the last run to get into Sarajevo, you had to go through four Serbian checkpoints. Uh, and so that was Serbian held territory and they would take their, their third of, of our aid off us at certain checkpoints and we, it all had to be documented and they would try and steal cigarettes or alcohol that they got. They would, you know, they would be aggressive and bellicose with us and, 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 and try and scare us. And, and, and then guys, any, guys, let's let's just remember they could have turned around and killed you at any point. Oh, I mean, absolutely, absolutely. Especially with some of them. Well, they nearly did actually quite a few times, and um, we'll, we'll come back to that. But so, so once you've got through those four checkpoints, you're now in a place that's that's called no man's land, and and it's very close to Sarajevo Airport into the city, and and it's about a five four to five kilometer run that is just decimated one road t-54 russian tanks blowing up at the side of the road a un checkpoint in the middle of it in an armored car and you just have to drive as fast as your vehicle will carry you lying uh, 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 lying down and and, and and driving and pointing like this you know snipers shooting at you uh, and and that's that was called sniper's alley and that, that at the time was the most dangerous road in the world i think um and, and and that was the last run in, in into bosnia so into sarajevo so you get there and then and met all the kids come out we, we go to our where we stored our food in the unas towers offload the trucks and then we spent the next four or five days distributing some of that food around and then you have to get out the same way still being shot at and and, and that's the story of how um how we painted the, the trucks yellow because one day we were driving down there uh i think it was bill carter was in the vehicle christoph the french guy and and it was a white land rover with a red cross um and before the red cross said no one can use red crosses by the way mm. and um we were getting shot at the whole way down so i'm literally driving and just pointing this thing in the right direction and when, when we got to the end we all get up and start you know hysterically laughing be because of the anxiety and I looked across and we, we had a white UN convoy next to us. And I, you know what? I, I'm not sure whether they're shooting at us or the, or the UN convoy because they hated the UN. Everyone hated the UN. So I sent a message back to the, to the London office and said, no more white trucks. And that's how yeah. they decided to paint them all yellow and do, adorn them in cartoon characters. And, and that's what really we believe and, and spiritually believe that stopped us from, from getting shot too many times. A, a few of our trucks have bullet holes in it's um it's, it's what to me as an outsider makes your story so bloody amazing it's you're, surreal it was got, surreal you're going into a war zone risking your lives at every second and yet you've got trucks and they've got fucking mickey mouse and Dabby, <laughs> Dabby, <laughs> Dabby. Felix the cat. <laughs> so, so so this was the part of our cunning plan chris we, yeah. we, it said in my best Baldrick voice, we wanted to be as non-threatening as possible. Yeah. And, and, and we wanted to look like a bunch of war tourists that were just doped off our faces and just there for a, for a kick. We, we were the, you know, the, the merry pranksters of, of, of Bosnia, of, of aid work. And we just, we were just so, you know, we, we were just so not serious, you know, that it was just, 
they just didn't care about us. The big UN trucks, the white trucks, we worry about them. But these guys with the, with the spiky blonde hair and the earrings and juggling and- Oh, we'll let them through. They're just Ooh. idiots. They're just war tourists and they've only got little trucks. In the meantime, we're smuggling in drugs, medication, um, really important stuff. And occasionally smuggling, smug, smuggling, smuggling children out. Um, whilst under this this guise and this ruse of we're not really terribly serious we, we're just a bunch of hippies who just want to come to a war zone and and, and have a you know do the hippie trail um and, and it works let, graham let's let's just remember here it only needs one guy on a checkpoint who's off his fucking head on meth yeah. or crap or coke and or whatever that decides yeah. he's having a moment and he's going to fucking execute all of you yeah. Oh, it, it happened. It happened a few times, Chris. I, 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 I I've had guns, um, and, and yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. had a gun pointed at me. Yeah. I mean, we didn't stop at a a stop sign coming back from Garage Day, and this it was actually a policeman though. Actually, it wasn't actually a, a. I don't think it was an army guy, but anyway, he had a gun. They're all the same. He got he got all our passports. Um, had the guns pointed at the gun pointed at me and the gang and um i wasn't i wasn't letting him get away with it i was like hey predstavas out yet you know the show for the children you've seen us on the you know i he was trying to say that we we were only entertaining the the bosniaks and i was like no 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 we we were in rogatica we were on banya luka television didn't you see it? we're famous you know like <laughs> we're rock I, stars you can't shoot us we don't want to disappear now <laughs> we're too famous to disappear <laughs> the world will know the world will find out if you shoot me <laughs> do you uh, do you want balloons <laughs> i started negotiating with balloons and face paints and do you know it worked <laughs> It worked, I, hey, and, and, I, and we did the same with vodka and cigarettes. I, I, I completely get it because in in Mozambique we had to hitchhike everywhere, right? We 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 are, you know, we're an aid agency, base base basically, you know, we're a benevolent yeah. organisation. Which there's an aside there. It, it, there's no such thing as charity. The, it, there's just greedy fucking people, if you ask me. Yeah. Right? But but let's not let let's not go there. Do, do so, the dealing. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, it's all about the fucking money. Yeah. No, it's not about the yeah. money. It's about power. It's always power about power. Mm -hmm. charity. Is always about fucking power. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. What was it? Lord Acton said. Uh, you know, power corrupts. Absolute absolute power, power corrupt, absolutely power absolutely right and that is that mm. describes yeah charity for bunch of warlords yeah was that orwell though wasn't that animal farm yeah oh well all, yeah. all well was on the same track you know how that guy yeah. knew you know anyone watching if you haven't read 1984 bloody do it if you if you want to know why we're the all time on lockdown to read at it. the minute read 1984 yeah. right yeah yeah but but there I was in, in Mozambique and me and my Hungarian roommate, my, my buddy that we were doing the, working at the street children's school. Yeah. We had to hitchhike to another, um, another school in, in Mozambique. So, and it was somewhere in the bush and we got pulled up by the police and, and police in these countries is AKA dis extortion you know it's, yeah, well, that's how they get their wages it's hand in glove you get stopped yeah. by the police you give them money they let you go it, it's just that simple right and of course we're there with our you know western fucking values no we're, we're, we're not yeah wow <laughs> so me and jolt his name was l l very lovely lovely man we're there stopped by these police at this checkpoint and they're like trying to get money out of us and the funny thing was the, the gig we were going to at this other school, allegedly that, well, no, not allegedly, that the president of Mozambique was gonna rock up there and do a speech. I don't even know if, I, I can't remember meeting him. I don't even think he did, but, but so we said to these policemen, oh, 
we're friends of the president. <laughs> you know, it, it is that basic. You've got to use that simple yeah. psychology. Yeah. We said, yeah. oh, we're friends with the president. He's sending us up to this school. He wants us to do a speech. Okay, they let us go. <laughs> you know. No, it, you it, don't want to. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it, you do. You slip into that psychology like you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, well, it's survival. like Gaffney. Uh, survival. So for, for a part of the time where we were doing these convoys back and forwards, taking anybody's aid, as long as they give us diesel, enough to get in and out. And, and, and we tactically... Um, would store the diesel in a, in a place called Fornitsa with a Muslim family so that we only ran into Sarajevo with enough diesel to get in and out. Otherwise, the Serbs would just steal it off you and then you can't get out. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Gaffney, who, 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 well, who we call Gaffney, Tony Gaffney, who is our convoy leader at the time, Irish lad, balls of steel. And, and I'm just going, I'm, as a military person, Chris, I'm looking at him going, Tony, that guy you're telling to fuck off is a mass murdering psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> you, you fucking raving loon. What are you doing? <laughs> and, and, and he would just front them. He, he'd go toe to toe with them. <laughs> well, he, he would so front them and, 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 <laughs> and, and uh, just, just a raving mad Irishman. And, and, and we're just looking and going, and eventually these warlords who have killed hundreds of people would just back down and go, yeah, okay, you're annoying. Go away. Get, get off you go then. <laughs> Carry on with your convoy. And I'm going, respect, Tony. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, Ball for okay. steel, mate. <laughs> yeah. Or you're mad Irish. I don't know, but well done. <laughs> so and we got through. And, and, and so we're in we're in Sarajevo. Now, what we're talking about, because we mentioned lockdown, is we're now in a city. I, I, I don't know what how how it's, it's a big city. It's Sarajevo, it's the capital of Yugoslavia. The millions of people live in there. There is no electricity, none. There's no water. No one's tap turns on. Yeah. They're surrounded by the hills, so they're being shot at and bombed permanently. And there's a curfew at night, and there's no food coming in. And at night, you can't light candles or a cigarette because mm. the, the snipers on the hills will see you and shoot at you or grenade you. There's people just getting blown up. There's kids being shot, blown up in the, in, in, in the streets. Every time you go and, 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 and collect water, and, and, and we had to go and get water, we live like the locals. Yes, we had a little bit of food from our pomoch, from our aid, but we had to go and collect water in our jerry cans in the streets and run with them because we refused to take any type of UN accreditation because we didn't want to be part of the corruption. Um, so this city, as soon as it gets dark, that's a massive city that's silent apart from tracer fire. Uh, you know, the, 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 the machine gun bullets with the red tracers and shells and grenades coming in all night long, like a firework display and, and fighting on the hills. And, and, and it was just craziness. And um, of course, the, these people would go and lock themselves down in, in, in the basements. OK, so we're running these convoys in and out. When we got in there, we stored our food and we, we, we would refuse to just leave it and, and bug out like the UN do, because then it ends up on the black market. And that's, that's just disgusting. It's just a terrible thing to happen. So we, we left there and Christoph, bless his heart, stayed with me. And then Bill, an American friend of ours, joined. And, and we ran the distribution office in Sarajevo and, and, and would decide where the food went and, and give small yeah. amounts uh, at the time. Now. On one convoy, we decided that, that we're all going back out. Um, but the fighting had got particularly bad in, 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 in Bosnia outside Sarajevo. It got really, 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 really bad. And um, we couldn't take the truck, the two trucks and the Land Rover. So the diesel was in a place called Fornica, which is just outside Sarajevo. And we said to the trucks, you, you go this route and we'll go another route and we'll pick up the fuel and meet you somewhere and actually i'm going to come back to that story because i'm going to go to another one we got given a load of footage right video footage from bosnian press where we we're in sarajevo and this footage was of 
um, General Mladic ordering the bombardment of civilians and uh, I think it was the Dobrynya Hospital. He, he's ordering that the Serbs shell the hospital and, and civilians. And we had this given to us. So we were, we, were, we were doing a normal convoy in, a normal convoy out. We came across one of the Serb checkpoints. They stopped our trucks, they're empty. But they decided that there was something wrong with us. And they decided to take us all in and strip search us and x-ray all our uh, equipment. Now me and Christoph, the little French guy avoiding conscription, we had this video footage on us. And we're all gonna go into this building, get strip searched, and they're gonna find this footage. And yeah. that's it, that's it. it they were just absolutely there and then. They, they may have done it slowly out of pleasure. So we, we have this philosophy in the road trip that we act drunk, we act mad, we act like we're on drugs, we juggle, we, we, we cause confusion. So we caused all this confusion, and, and me and Christoph were just kept passing this videotape between us. And I, I've got dungarees, and I'm putting it down there, and I'm going in to get my strip search, and then I'm going back out. The guys are falling over. We're, we're just doing theatre, like Simon taught us to. We're, we're being clowns, right? And in the end, they, there, was, there was, I think there was 12 of us. They strip searched 10 of us, put most of our stuff through the x-ray machine. But me and Christoph managed to avoid being strip searched, and we kept the videotape on us, right? And we, we sent that to Reuters. We got out, of, out there, we sent it to London office, they sent it to Reuters. That evidence was used in The Hague against Mladic. Thank Bloody God. How? <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and what, what I call it, and you know what I mean, I call it slate of hand, right? Uh, uh, that's what magicians call it, slate to hand, or cause a distraction. Look at the pretty girl while I'm doing the dirty trick over here. And, and that's how we operated. And, and, and these, we fooled these guys by doing this. And, and, and that, was a, that was a, you know, that was a life and death situation. It, we, uh, Christoph and I were shitting ourselves. We knew perfectly well what would happen if they found this on us. Um, and, and we managed to get through. Um, yeah. And, and another time we were going back into Sarajevo and because it all took so long, um, by the time we got to a place called Elysia, which was a, a Serbian stronghold, it was being attacked by the Bosnians. It was, it was getting dusk. And the Serbian police said, you can't go. This is the last checkpoint. You can't go to Sarajevo now. It's, it's going to be too dangerous. And we're like, no, we're going. We don't care. They're, the, the Bosnians won't shoot at us, the Bosnians won't bomb us, we're going. And they, and they, they refused to let us go and, and because they wanted to hold us hostage as a, as a bunch of internationals. So they took us into an army camp, a Chetnik army camp, and um, handed us over to the, to the, to the military. <laughs> military, or the militia. Chetniks, beards, ugly, drunk, Slivovich, drugs. And, um, they had our passports and they made us park our trucks outside, took us inside and, and the police handed us over to the military. Um, and, and, and that's, I think really, that's the first time I realized that, um, You're in a I, shit. I, I think, yeah. I, I, well, I think that there was an Indian, uh, an Indian Sioux chief or running bull or someone who said today is a good day to die. Mm. That, that, that's what went, went, went through my mind. And, and it was evening. The drunk soldiers come in, the Czechniks, the mercenaries, they're shouting, they're spitting at us, they're hitting us with the rifle butts, they're putting guns in our heads, they're cocking the rifles. And, and you know, I, in, in the book that I'm eventually going to write one day, the, the prologue is about this story because one of the soldiers hit Christoph. Yabenti Mata, Yabenti Mata, UN, you, you are UN, UN. They hated us, they wanted to kill us. And uh, Christoph falls over. And I, I step up and go, whoa, he spits in my face, puts the gun, AK-47 in my, AK in my face, cocks it, and the police come back in, because they don't, they, they don't want this, and they grab the gun off him, and they take the magazine off and, and, and put the magazine down. But they don't realize that there's one up the spout. And this, this guy's still drunk and crazy and, and, and trying to, um, you know, 
they're just going mental at us because they think we're UN and this is in the early days. And, and we really, really thought that this was it, uh, it our numbers up. Um, I hope they just shoot us. And I remember just staring at the guy, blankly staring, going, if you're going to shoot me, pal, I'm going to watch you do it. And I, I think you know this, Chris, that, that when, when you come to the point of death, it becomes very serene and very quiet and very calm. And it's almost like when you're a kid and, and you fall off your bike, everything slows down. Mm. And all of a sudden, you just become very zen and very, very Buddhist about it all and go, exactly. okay, okay, this is it. And the thing is that they'd all, they walked us through this army camp to, to, to take us to a room after this is dispersed. And we had to go past these rooms um, that were torture rooms and, and there were metal beds and there were garrots and chains hanging and there was pools of blood all over the, uh, over the floor. And obviously these were where they, where they bring the Muslim uh, soldiers and interrogate them and torture them and kill them um, and, and the women and rape them. And we had to walk past that. And then they put us in this room for the night and they've taken our passports. So we, we get into this room and I go, okay guys, no one take your boots off. No one get in your sleeping bags tonight, lay on top of your sleeping bags. We're gonna put all the furniture up against the door, right? <laughs> which we did. And there's bombing and shelling going on outside. And I said, this is the door that we run out of if we need to. And we, and, and we go into twos, just like the Great Escape, and we bomb burst. <laughs> and um, in that toilet of, of that room, you know, it was, it was an old hotel, it was just wall to ceiling, blood, fresh blood and blood stains. And, and through the night, there, there was banging on the door and trying to get in and, 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 and it was just crazy. And, and we just sat in that room just shitting ourselves, really. But when I say shitting yourself, you, you go into this weird mode of hysteria and, and, and you start laughing and telling funny jokes and, and, and trying to conjole yeah. each other through it. And, and, and we just, we're smoking cigarettes and just fucking laughing and telling the most ridiculous black humour. And, 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 you know, we're safe. And luckily in the morning, you know, we, we cleared out, they came and got us and they allowed us to get back in our trucks and, and drive to Sarajevo, but they had ransacked our trucks. They had taken absolutely everything of value, including our personal belongings and, and everything. So I, I, I had my old um, Bergen, my old Parabergen. It was gone, my clothes were gone, my stereo, my Walkman, my Game Boy any alcohol we had, any cigarettes, half the aid, most of the aid, they had just gone through and ransacked a lot. And they'd just gone, you know what? Yellow trucks, bunch of hippies. We, 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 we can't use them as bounty. Let them go. But it was a, it was a very, scary, very, very scary time, but it becomes very surreal as well. And, and it was just a very bad misjudgment of, it got a little bit too late. Bosnians had decided to try and attack Elijah. And they decided that, no, nah, we're going to keep you in that camp tonight. <laughs> and off we went, got to Sarajevo and never been so happy to be in a war zone in my life. <laughs> How crazy is that? <laughs> and, Simo, and, and the rest... And I, I mean, well, stressing out at the other end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and were you a part of this, Simone, or was this a different trip? No, no, this was, this is why, yeah, this is why no women were on those convoys. Absolutely, but, um, absolutely, yeah. Um, certainly, I was biting my nails in Split or in London or wherever I was at that time, but I do remember these guys disappearing for weeks at a time and just hanging out for some news that they were alive. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It, it was that hit and miss at times. Guys, yeah. li li listen, right? I'm, I'm, gosh, I, I literally have no words. I will have to try and find words because obviously this is a podcast. <laughs> I, love, I, I love you both <laughs> massively. There's more um, stories. <laughs> you know, you, you've enriched my life just through your passion and your kindness. Um, we will resume this because I'm sure our watchers are going to have loads of questions and I, I, they're probably not coming into my head now. I'm also conscious that I don't want people to look and go, oh, it's a three hour podcast. I, I'm, not, I'm not watching that. 
because because sure. I, w I want people to watch it, you know. So let it, yeah, so, so, yeah. So, so so that's that. I mean, there's the the Bruce Dickinson. Yeah, um, we're about halfway concert. through. I reckon, don't you think? So about, about halfway through. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we've got yeah. Bruce Dickinson, Iron Maiden. We've got Bill Carter. We've got Miss Sarajevo. Uh, well, yeah, got Bono, Bono. We got we got U 2s connection. You know, we got them yeah. involved. Pavarotti. There was quite a bit yeah. going on, wasn't there? Yeah, we, we, we've just started. Let's take that in part two. I think that's a great part two. Yeah. Good idea, Chris. Good idea. Okay, I mean, if anyone so, wants to read the book so they get an inside knowledge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's such you. a beautiful, such a beautifully written book, and, and 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 that's the point. It's and here's the point, Chris. The Simone's book is written about Simone's story yeah. of her perception of her time in the serious road trip, and that's different to mine, and it's different to everybody else's, and and the other twenty. Uh, skidders or, or trippers as we call them as much as you know that podcast that we did that actually I was amazed got 6,000 odd likes that was just my perception of my time in the military right that that, that was my view of it that's not yeah. wrong and it may be different to someone else's view it, it's certainly different to someone who decided to go and then do selection and, and and did other things but that was my story that was my view that's how I saw it that's how I lived and I decided to leave the military and go and do other things. So, you know, everybody's yep. got a different perception. All roads lead to Rome. All roads lead to Rome. <laughs> if if you decide to take that road, and, and, and yeah, a lot of people uh, that's the most important thing. Yes. But yeah, you know, we'd love to join you again, Chris, if you want us back. Oh, I can't. I I honestly cannot <laughs> wait. I cannot wait. So, and I'll give I'm you a little taster. Um, <laughs> where where Simone got a lot of her inspiration from is a guy called patch adams um and oh. anyone who doesn't anyone who doesn't know who patch adams is that look comes him a bit up later, Graham. Be that comes a because bit later. robin williams robin williams played patch adams mm. yeah. in yeah. a film yes, yeah. and that is the and, and that's simon's friend who who, yeah. who gave I, only, I, I only befriended him after i got back from bosnia so there was a mutual connection respect there. Yeah. yeah and this guy just went you know what, I've done some incredible shit with my clowning, but what you've done, Simon, uh, mutual yeah. respect. He was uh, amazing. Um, yeah. what, a, what a connection. And, let's, and how lovely, these global connections. Let's, uh, yeah, of course, it's all about connecting. It's all about love. It's all about loving yourself unconditionally, loving humanity and loving yeah. the universe. And if you do yeah. that, yeah. shit yeah. is going to be all right, you know. Yeah, so, so let guys, the hate go. Listen, just just obviously stay on stay on the line so we so I can thank you, you know, a, a bit more personally if that if that's the right way. Um, but obviously, I'm just gobsmacked. Gobs, I'm gobsmacked. I, I wish I was on one of those convoys because it would have been. I mental. wish you were with us, Chris. It yeah. would have been mental, you know. It sounds like a real tripper. <laughs> well, I would have loved it. It's a real yeah. in, inspiration to people to get out there and live your freaking life you know live your lives do something with your life do something with your life that is amazing just once just once yeah but for it to be amazing it, you have to give and the risk right? there's a little bit of risk there, isn't there it has to be a risk it has to be a venture but you have to give something do it once in your life just once um, you don't waste love. your life base everything on love yeah. You're gonna get so much happiness in your life. I, yeah. I you know, yeah. I promise you. You that. know that. You know that. Simon knows that. Other people don't know where that investment and return comes. Just trust well, us. It, 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 will, it, it will come back. It goes counter to everything we're brainwashed with. It does. Yeah. From it childhood, does. doesn't it? You know. Yeah. We gotta yes. get the car, the money, the yeah. this, the yeah. hat. Yeah. No, no, no. You don't. You gotta get love. It's that yeah. simple. If you don't get yeah. to that yeah. point in your life, it is a switch for love, even almost, isn't it? Yeah, guys. As I said, stay on the line to our friends, to our guests, Simone yeah. and Graham. Massive love to you. Thank you so much. Really, I, I cannot wait to pick this up again. We haven't even started. If you ask me, I want to. <laughs> I've got a million questions now in my head that I'm. I'm not going to go there because we'll just kick off again. 
To our, <laughs> friends at home, better. to our friends at home, thank you for watching another edition of the Bought the T-Shirt podcast. <laughs> I love you. Just remember that. Namaste. Oh. Namaste. Thanks a lot. Yeah, lots of love to you too, Chris. <laughs> thank you, my darling. Thank you. Sláinte. <laughs> Hello friend, I hope this finds you well. My name's Chris Thrall, I'm a former Royal Marines Commando and I fought my way back from chronic trauma and addiction to live, work and travel in 80 countries across all seven continents, achieving all of my dreams and goals along the way. Now I pass my simple system on to other people, but I can only help you if you like and subscribe. So please do so because you get one life and if you live it right, one is enough.